contrasts themselves are the very basis of architectural experience. The experience of equality is sharpened and made tangible by connection with its bipolar opposite. Coolness is experienced in relation to a sense of warmth, and cozy containment is experienced in reference to soaring openness, and the awareness of light is anchored by darkness. And when we carefully design a link between these two opposing conditions, we're actually elevating and nurturing some of these uh, fundamental human needs. Today, I just want to talk about the relationship and the contrast between the inside and the outside. And I want to give you five strategies on how you can create this uh, inside and outside condition and um, some of the different ways you can link these two conditions. Hey guys, my name is Dami and I am a licensed architect in a very wet, rainy Vancouver, BC. <laughs> On this channel, we talk about architecture and design and also some tools and strategies that can help us have more meaningful and fulfilling careers in architecture. In the summer of 2013, my friend and I traveled across the US with the goal of visiting every single Frank Lloyd Wright building scattered across North America. We ended up visiting a grand total of 25 cities and 111 Frank Lloyd Wright buildings. We heard beautiful and sometimes tragic stories from dozens of homeowners, and this experience has obviously transformed the way that I see things and the way that I design. But I have always kind of felt like these design strategies came from intuition rather than it being a learned skill. And then recently I came across this book called The Good House. Um, I'll leave the link below. And this book breaks down some of the strategies that I saw in so many of the Frank Lloyd Wright's buildings. So in this video and in the next series of videos, I want to distill some of the concepts and strategies and try to break it down into a series of simple, uh, straightforward design strategies that you can use when uh, designing small buildings or houses. So inside and outside are, of course, interlinked. You can't create an inside without shaping the outside, and the link provides a transition between inside and outside. Concave spaces make it feel like you're inside, and convex spaces make it feel like you're outside. Straight corners are used to create a more defined space, and round corners make the space feel more spacious because the boundaries are harder to perceive. But of course, round spaces come with their own challenges because it's pretty hard to place furniture in a round living room. Boundaries don't necessarily have to be defined with walls. You can define boundaries with landscape elements like bushes or benches or rocks. Like in this instance, we don't have any walls, but um, you can still see that the boundaries are pretty clearly defined and it really feels like its own enclosed space. One simple way to create this inside outside condition without moving around a bunch of walls is just playing around with the transparency of the wall. The more opaque a surface is, it feels more like you're inside and the more transparent it is, you feel more connected to the outside. Courtyard schemes are interesting because you're creating kind of a totally new condition. You're capturing a piece of the outdoors, but you're in an enclosed space. Because technically you're in an outside space, but you're enclosed with walls on all sides. And it makes you feel like you're somewhere between inside and outside. If a building establishes geometric order, then that order is going to radiate out into the landscape. For example, when we're outside, we can feel the geometry of the inside. And when we're inside, we can sense the building's order radiating out into the landscape. If you hear an architect freaking out about how the interior floor tiles don't align with the tiles of the porch, they're not saying that just to be a d Well, maybe they are, but because it's a way we create continuity between the inside and outside. If you have a really symmetrical building, you can continue that symmetry onto the landscape. And as soon as you step off the axis, that's when you truly feel outside, even though we don't have any actual walls creating that boundary. 
The Versailles is a great example. We were actually just there two years ago, and it's incredible how the architecture creates a grid and establishes authority by radiating that grid out all the way into the landscape. In between spaces are places like porches, patios, and arcades. Um, and at a smaller scale, it can be a deep doorway or a window ledge to convey that sense of in-betweenness. Before we go into our next strategy, I wanna share a quick message from our sponsor. One of the problems I've always had is that architecture products that I love are so freaking expensive. And that's why I was so happy when I discovered Pacific Arc, because they have high quality, durable products, similar to Rotring, but at a fraction of a price. And so I don't feel so paranoid about losing my pencil when I take it out for sketching or take it out on a job site. I've been testing out their products for the past couple of weeks and I'm really surprised at the durability and quality they're able to deliver at such a good price. I've been working with Pacific Arc to curate a kit of product. So there's three kits, one of them is for those of you starting school, so it includes all the fundamental architectural supplies that you're going to need to get through school. And there's another kit that includes the tools that we keep around our office. And the third kit is a kit of basic products that I use on a daily basis. If you use my code in the description, they're going to be giving you a 30% discount for Black Friday. And after that, it'll be a 15% discount. So take advantage of it while you can. Okay, back to the strategies. In the house that Mies van der Rohe designed for the 1931 Berlin exhibition, he blurs the inside and outside by continuing the walls all the way from the inside, all the way to the outside, and creates a kind of interlocking condition. You can also place kind of unexpected interior elements outside, like locating a fireplace outside or locating a couch outside. If this was interesting for you, you might also be interested in strategies you can use to present your designs. I have a video on presentation tips right here. Also, if you wanna check out some of my designs, I have videos like the one on how I turn my anxieties into an architectural experience. I'll leave it right here. I'd love to know, have you visited any Frank Lloyd Wright buildings? I am obviously obsessed. And uh, so I'd love to know what was your experience like? Let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications next time I post a new video. And lastly, please remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.